All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of chem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, this is episode 12, the Central Pyramid of Giza. So in today's episode, I will be presenting the configuration and components of the Central Pyramid, and I will also be providing a brief introduction to exactly how this structure operated. So I hope you all can see that we've been slowly building a foundation of information so that when we get to the complicated chemical engineering details in the future, it will be a little bit easier to understand. I'm very excited about today's video. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available. So if you'd like to help support the channel, just go to www.thelandofchem.com. You could pick up a copy of the book today. It means more to me than words could ever describe. So I will simply say thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Central Pyramid of Giza. And this is an absolutely spectacular picture taken from our friend Yusuf's balcony as we prepared to eat dinner that evening. And let me tell you guys, it does not get much better than this view. But nonetheless, the Central Pyramid of Giza. Now, it's quite unfortunate that this pyramid does not get a lot of attention in the alternative theories regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids. And it is my belief that the Central Pyramid of Giza may have actually been the focal point and the most important structure on the Giza Plateau. So during all of my expeditions to Egypt, we keep seeing these recurring hieroglyphs that refer to the Great Pyramid, but our guides have informed us that these hieroglyphs actually depict the Central Pyramid. And during the ancient times, this structure was actually referred to as the Great Pyramid. So I believe that this is an indication and implication of this structure's importance in regard to the function of the entire Giza Plateau. And so what is the connection between the operation of these three pyramids here on the Giza Plateau? Well, in my opinion, the biggest deficiency regarding the alternative theories that circulate about the pyramids of Egypt is that they focus only on the Great Pyramid, as if it were an isolated structure, as if there were no other pyramids here on the Giza Plateau, and as if there were no other relevant pyramids in all of Egypt. So the Great Pyramid, there are tons of theories that circulate regarding this structure's function. Okay, so it is a microwave amplifying, resonance inducing, electricity producing machine, or it's some sort of magical Tesla tower that draws electromagnetic energy up through the earth and converts it into electricity. Okay, well that's all well and good, but if the Great Pyramid had that function, what are these other two structures doing? And if the Great Pyramid had that function, what are all the rest of the pyramids in Egypt doing? Okay, so the Great Pyramid is by far from an isolated structure. I will say this, that all three pyramids on the Giza Plateau were intentionally designed with a very specific pattern that incorporates all three pyramids. These three structures are inseparable and they worked as a system. So the theory contained within the narrative for the Land of Chem book is the only theory out there that provides a comprehensive overview and explanation of the function of all of the Egyptian pyramids, starting with the Step Pyramid, moving to the Red and Bent Pyramids of Dashur, then moving to the Pyramids of Giza, and in the final chapter I discuss the passage chamber structures of ancient Ireland, and I provide an explanation for how all of these structures operated. And in my opinion, it is the most practical theory that is compatible with what we know of the dynastic Egyptian civilization is that they were well aware of chemistry, they knew how to produce chemicals, and my theory is that the Egyptian pyramids were designed to produce these chemicals on an industrial scale. And these are just a couple of quick pictures showing what it is like to stand up close and personal next to the central pyramid. So this here on the left is Yusuf and I walking up the causeway towards the central pyramid. And then here on the right, you can see how absolutely immense this structure truly is. And I have to say that the central pyramid of Giza is equally as impressive as the Great Pyramid, if not more so due to the remaining casing stones on the top of the pyramid. And we're gonna to get to those casing stones, we're gonna be discussing the red granite casing stones at the bottom of the structure here in just a moment. 
All right, this is an old and rudimentary diagram of the central pyramid, but I really like this one and it shows the excavated area of the bedrock here on the western and northern sides of the structure. And this stone was removed in the lowering and leveling of the plateau prior to the construction of the pyramid. And those stones were utilized in the construction of the body of these structures. So here on the south side of the pyramid is the satellite pyramid. And this structure had the same function as the satellite pyramid of the bent pyramid in Dashur. So inside the structure, the internal components dead in the center of the pyramid is the primary reaction chamber. Here on the outside of the structure, you'll see your two reservoir inlet shafts. So you have your lower reservoir inlet shaft and your upper reservoir inlet shaft. And there's two movable stone valves located here at the bottom of each of these shafts. And here in the lowest section of the pyramid, you will find the collection chamber, which was utilized to remove the aqueous product from the structure. And this picture was taken on the south side of the central pyramid, and it shows that excavated area of the bedrock that I mentioned before, and all this stone was removed to lower and level the plateau prior to the construction of the pyramid. And this section, this wall of stone, would have actually formed a portion of the reservoir that surrounded the structure that was filled with water. Again, we know already that that water was utilized within the structure to facilitate the chemical reactions to create the product of the central pyramid. All right, this is an exceptional three-dimensional diagram of the central pyramid showing its configuration and components. So here surrounding the pyramid, you have your external reservoir, which would have been filled with water. And this is that area of bedrock that I showed in the previous picture that was excavated in the lowering and leveling of the plateau prior to the construction of the pyramid. So here on the south side of the central pyramid, you have the satellite pyramid that I mentioned previously, and I will get into the function of these structures in a later video. So here inside of the central pyramid, again, you have your primary reaction chamber located here in the center of the structure. In the lowest section of the structure, you have your collection chamber. Here is your upper reservoir intake shaft, and this is your lower reservoir intake shaft. And this is a picture of the remaining red granite casing stones that would have covered the lowest two courses of the central pyramid. And there's a couple of very interesting things to note in this picture. First, the construction method. So if you'll note here on the back side of these granite casing stones, they are inserted like teeth connecting into the body of the pyramid. I would have thought that this would have been a straight line of stone. However, each of these stones was carved individually to fit perfectly into the body of the pyramid itself. So the second thing to note here on the north side of the pyramid, there's actually the remains of a quarry and there are partially excavated stones here in this area. It's a really cool area if you ever get a chance to visit the Giza Plateau. And you can almost see one of the large Mason's hieroglyphs here that's on the northern side of that stone wall um, here in this excavated section. So of course I mentioned before, and I believe I covered this in my video on the Eastern Temple of the Great Pyramid, that the geology utilized in the construction of these pyramids was selected very intentionally. So this red granite certainly had a purpose, as did the limestone that was utilized in the construction of the body of the pyramid, and I will definitely get to that in a later video. All right, this picture was taken on the eastern side of the central pyramid, and I wanted to point out these large deposits of iron oxide. So these deposits are found all over the Giza Plateau, but most notably surrounding the central pyramid. And in this picture, you can see a close-up of that reddish-brown iron oxide material. And this deposit is located directly outside of the Central Pyramid's Eastern Temple. So an interesting thing to note about the Central Pyramid is that those deposits of iron oxide are actually found inside the body of the pyramid itself. So recall that the Central Pyramid was constructed on a mound of bedrock. And you can see here in the diagram the rough areas indicate sections of the internal components that have been excavated directly from the bedrock and the areas without have been constructed from limestone blocks. So during my November 2020 expedition to Egypt, I finally got a chance to go inside of this structure and I took several pictures standing right here. And if you look up into this excavated tunnel and shine a flashlight in there, you can see these large deposits of iron oxide, which is very, very interesting. And while we're here, just another quick review of the internal components. You have your primary reaction chamber here in the center of the structure. 
On the northern side of the structure, you will find your reservoir intake shafts. This is your upper intake shaft and your lower intake shaft. And here in the lowest section is your collection chamber. And here's a couple of pictures from inside of the central pyramid. So this picture was taken looking toward your upper reservoir intake shaft. And this shows that excavated tunnel where we found those deposits of iron oxide. This next picture, again, shining a flashlight into that excavated area. And again, you can see those large deposits of iron oxide that are inside the body of the central pyramid. Very, very interesting. And this picture was taken looking from that same spot back toward the primary reaction chamber located in the center of the structure. All right, this is another exceptional diagram of the central pyramid. And that previous series of pictures were all taken from standing right here. Again, that one was looking back towards the primary reaction chamber. Those several others were looking here into this excavated tunnel. So the next series of pictures, I'm gonna show the lower reservoir intake shaft. I'm gonna show you the primary reaction chamber and also an exclusive photo that I found of the collection chamber of the central pyramid. All right, this picture shows the lower reservoir intake shaft of the central pyramid, which is now used to enter its internal components. In this next picture, we have the primary reaction chamber located in the center of the structure. Again, you can see this section of the chamber was all excavated directly from bedrock, and the roof portion was constructed with limestone blocks. And in this picture, you can see the collection chamber of the central pyramid. And this, unfortunately, is one of those off limits areas of the Egyptian pyramids. And you have to pay them big money to get them to open up a very small gate so you can go down inside of this chamber. Why is this chamber off limits? I have no idea. There's absolutely nothing down here except for the fact that it was a functional part of this structure. So what was the function of the central pyramid of Giza? At this point, I'm not going to reveal the chemical reactions that were occurring inside of the primary reaction chamber because to do so, I would have to fully explain the function of the Great Pyramid and the product of that structure first before I can get into exactly how the central pyramid's primary reaction chamber operated and explaining the chemical reactions and product that were created inside of that chamber because again, these pyramids worked in conjunction and the Giza Plateau worked as a system. So you can't have one without the other. But nonetheless, I will explain the fluid dynamics and the mechanisms of operation that were involved in the lower system here on the right hand corner. So the first mechanism of operation that was involved in the function of the central pyramid is stone valve number one. So let's envision the external reservoir surrounding the structure filled with water and both of your reservoir intakes valve would have been submerged in the water inside of that reservoir. So let's say that we're going to open stone valve number one. What's going to happen? The water is going to flow down your inlet shaft and into your collection chamber. So I will say that the gaseous product being produced inside of the primary reaction chamber inside this pyramid is extremely water soluble. And as that dense gas is produced here in your primary reaction chamber, it will flow through this shaft down this connecting shaft towards your collection chamber. And again, those fluid dynamics that are involved as the water flows from the reservoir down the collection shaft and into the collection chamber is going to facilitate the collection of that gaseous product, which is going to immediately dissolve into solution, which was then collected from your collection chamber. So that is mechanism number one involving stone valve number one. So let's say that we're going to close this stone valve and we're going to open stone valve number two. What's going to happen? So again, the water is going to flow from the reservoir down the inlet shaft and into this section of the central pyramid. At that point, the water is going to cascade into this lower section, flow down towards your collection chamber, and then will be drained from your collection chamber. So again, the fluid dynamics involved in the water flowing down the inlet shaft, cascading through this section and moving into your collection chamber is going to facilitate the flushing and collection of any remaining gases that had been not been collected in the previous step. So again, if you can envision the water flowing down this shaft and down here, that fluid dynamic system is going to draw any gases remaining in your primary reaction chamber through the shaft into solution, which again was collected out of your collection chamber. All right, and the final mechanism involved in the operation of the central pyramid is going to be purging of the system in preparation for the subsequent production cycle. So we are going to close stone valve number one. 
We are going to close the valve inside of the collection chamber, and we're going to open stone valve number two. So what's gonna happen at this point? Again, the water is gonna flow down your inlet shaft. It's gonna cascade into the lower section. We've already closed off the valve in the collection chamber, so this entire system is gonna to start to fill with water. The water will fill the lower system. It will begin to rise here in your middle section. The water will continue to flow into your primary reaction chamber, and that water is utilized to collect the water-soluble byproduct that was created inside of the primary reaction chamber. So a quick recap of those three mechanisms. So mechanism number one is gonna be utilizing stone valve number one for collection of your aqueous product from the collection chamber. Mechanism number two is gonna be utilizing stone valve number two in a flushing sequence, which was utilized to collect any remaining gaseous product that was created inside of the primary reaction chamber. And then mechanism number three is going to be a purge of the system, which was utilized to collect soluble solid byproduct that was created here in your primary reaction chamber. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a brief overview of the function of the central pyramid. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to www.thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt. All the orders really mean a lot to me. So thank you all so much in advance. 12, the Central Pyramid of Giza. I really hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to the operation of this magnificent structure. And I promise we're going to be diving into much further detail regarding the chemical reactions, products, etc. in the very near future. I also have a huge surprise coming up in the next couple of days. So stay tuned here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel and also on my Instagram, which is at the Land of Chem on IG. If you aren't following me already, definitely jump on there because I'm going to be posting some exclusive videos and pictures here in the next couple of days. I won't spoil the surprise, but it's something pretty amazing. So the website, www.thelandofchem.com, if you want to pick up a copy of the book. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the material. If you like the video, definitely leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever it is, definitely drop a comment. It helps to get this video out into the algorithm and get this in front of people. I've also really enjoyed interacting with everybody, responding to the comments and getting a conversation going in that section. It's really amazing to hear what you guys think, and I really appreciate everyone that's left a comment so far. And I think that's it. So without further ado, we will see you next time. <laughs>